So again, we are at the holy uh, pond where Abraham landed. I'm not sure of the name. I'll have to look it up. It's hard for me to pronounce. But I'll walk along this pond so you can hear the Turkish people. These are pilgrims from all over the area who come to this holy place, pay their respects to Father Abraham, and pay their respects to Islam by praying in the mosque here. Perhaps they have special favors to ask from Allah, and they believe making this pilgrimage makes their request stronger. It's Bebek, Turkish Bebek. <coughs> there again, you see how many carp. The reason why nobody would dare fish these carp out of the water and eat them is because the legend says, if you eat these carp, you will go blind. And nobody wants to be the first one to find out that it isn't true, or that it is true. <coughs> there in the distance, you see the hills of Urfa. These little boys have some millet, perhaps, to feed the carp. And when they throw that in, oh boy, the carp love that. They are well-fed carp. You can see they're very baliketa, meaning very fat fish, beautiful fish. Nobody would ever eat these. Come on. Little boy's giving me some millet. Oh my goodness, my goodness. <laughs> They love this stuff and they come <laughs> and they come to eat it from the little boy. Where are you from? America. Aha, uh -huh, California. There's a gentleman in the traditional Arabic dress. You have to remember that Syria is only a few miles from here. Uh, I was on the Aleppo Road yesterday on the way to the Haran Plain. Um, the Aleppo Road, of course, would go to Aleppo, Syria, where there's some serious civil war going on. Bashar Assad is killing his own people in order to stay in power. His father did that before him, and the world is aghast at what he's doing to his own people, the Syrian people. Uh, Bashar Assad is an Alawite. He is also a protector of Christians. So the Christians and Alawites and the Shia know uh, Everyone knows that if Bashar Assad is deposed, Alawites and Christians are in danger. Their lives are in danger. There again, you see people feeding the holy carp. I've seen this pool have 10 times this number of fish. A cat could walk across their backs to the other side, but now they seem to have thinned out the fish population so that it is not so thick. Um, here you see some traditional Kurdish um, clothing, beautiful spangles. They might wear this for a, to a wedding or to a party. You see the kafia, the Syrian kafia, and here's a, a turban, a turban that maybe would would be worn just for festivals. Nobody wears these kind of turbans anymore, but. Um, they want to have them on hand for tourists who want these beautiful scarves in Chandelier. For they're known for their scarves, scarves, and I have many, many scarves from Chandelier. Here's the holy carp on a keychain. So they're selling those at the very place where the holy carp are. You see all these beautiful things for sale. I love to go souvenir shopping in. Merhaba. Good night. Nekadar, um, Nekadar, Nazar. Iki lira. Iki lira. Aha. It's chocolate. Um, sonra, sonra. Tamam. Um, <clears throat> I just asked how much the little Nazars were. Nazars are, oh, <laughs> look at this. The Moh Mohammed is said to have loved kitty cats so much that he cut around, oh, that he cut around his robe so as not to disturb the kitties. So here, in honor of that story, you see two little kitties nestled, oh, nestled on a robe that might have been Mohammed's, and they are free of disturb, disturbance because they are inside this cage so that no one can disturb them. And so we see how 
Um, Turks love their cats because Mohammed loved cats and Ataturk loved cats. So you see how the legend is portrayed by having a cat sleeping on a robe uh, as Mohammed might have done and Ataturk after him uh, during the Republic days. So here again you see the Holy Mosque in the distance and I'm going to turn off the camera and try to find Abraham's cave where he was born according to all Muslims and then I will pick it up from there.